Gemini, thank you for joining me. This is your May 2017 astrology forecast with me, Anushka, and we've got some really cool things happening this month. We have the North Node shifting into Leo, which gives us all, well, it invites us all to kind of find our inner child and connect with a sense of fun and lightheartedness and self-expression. And as well as this, we've got Saturn trine Uranus, and that's on the 19th. And this is really positive. This is positive breakthroughs, and this is this is change energy and um, social reform. This is merging the old with the new and finding new ways of doing things that really work for us as a whole and an, and on an individual level. So let's go on to the dates on the third. Um, Gemini, we have your ruling planet going direct, and that's going direct in your 11th house. And so finally, we can start signing documents, we can commit to buying things, we can take that new job, whatever it is, we can move forward with plans. Hopefully you've done a bit of reviewing, maybe even doing a bit of reviewing in terms of how you fit within the social, your social scene. Um, the groups that you belong to, the causes you belong to, um, maybe you've been looking at your goals, your dreams, you know, the 11th house also rules our goals and our dreams, so perhaps you've been looking at that and you've got some clearer thinking on that, so let's move it, so now you can move forward and you should be feeling a lot, a lot better, a lot more clearer headed. Um, on the 9th, um, we have, where are we, on the 9th we have the sun, and that's in your 12th house at the moment. So your energy's probably been as it usually is at this time of year because before um, our birthday comes around, the sun enters our 12th house and it's where we almost assimilate all of the information from the year previous. So we kind of incubate before we come into our next kind of birth, or to our next year. So, so the sun's in Taurus in your 12th house and it's trining Pluto in Capricorn in your 8th house. So these are two very private houses. These are... Um, the eighth house is is intimacy. It's it's depth psychology. You know the twelfth house is is very much your private world. It rules institutions. It rules escapism, um, things like that. So there could be because you've got the sun here. You might have been doing a little bit of reflecting on yourself. You might have been taking time to yourself. Now this could be a really nice day for creativity. You could really come up with some powerful, beautiful, very esoteric um, creative ideas. Um, so for those of you who are creative, it's going to be really great. But it's also good for reflection. Um, it can be good for, for spirituality. And um, so generally, quite a kind of spiritual, connected kind of day um, where you're likely to kind of be feeling more in touch with otherworldly matters um, or maybe feeling feeling what goes on beneath the surface a bit more than you are, you know, really feeling in touch with um, outer reality. Um, okay, then on the 10th, we have the North Node going into Leo. So, as I said, you know, this is the North Node is, it spends about a year and a half in each sign. So it's been in Virgo in your fourth house. Now it's moving into Leo, into your third house, your third house of communication. So to me, this says, Gemini, it's about really expressing yourself. And I know you like to do that. Um, so Leo is about, you know, it's about connecting with our inner child. It's about love. It's about romance. It's about creativity. It's about enjoying life which is ultimately what we're here to do, isn't it? Yes, we're here to learn and grow, but we can't help but do that. Just by being on this planet, we naturally end up growing and learning. But we're also here to enjoy life. And that's something that a lot of us tend to forget. And I feel like this this North Node transition couldn't have come at a better time. You know, we've all been going through a lot. I know last year was tough for a lot of people. Now, finally, we're being asked to find our joy, connect to our joy, and express it, share it with the world. Whatever it is that you do, however it is you do it do it and express it to the world especially with leo ruling your third house of communication you know this could be that you you find a lot of joy with your siblings you know your relationship with your siblings could become even more rich um during this this north node transit um but you might find yourself maybe wanting to write more um you might find yourself kind of expressing yourself in that way and wanting to share that with the world but this is really lovely and it's asking you 
to enjoy expression, to enjoy lively conversation with people, and to be don't don't be afraid to let yourself show and, and, and show your kind of your love, your emotions, your joy through the way you express yourself. And you could find really lovely encounters happen to you just as you're running about doing your daily business, things that lead you to I don't know, unexpected places. Um, you might bump into people who are really interesting. Um, you might get a lot of enjoyment just from being in your local neighborhood and making short trips. So that's a really lovely energy. Also on the same day, we have a full moon in your sixth house in Scorpio. This full moon is, it can be quite a healing full moon and especially in your sixth house, you know, of health. Um, this makes me think if you've had any health issues going on, um, this could bring a light to them. Maybe there could be um, a positive conclusion, maybe there could be a positive diagnosis or, or treatment, or if you are very um, holistic in nature, or very kind of, you like to treat things on an energetic level, this is great healing energy to work with, this full moon in Scorpio in that sixth house. Um, it could also bring to the forefront themes of service um, and, and just day-to-day -day routine, but themes of service, how you how you're of service to people, that kind of things can also be it can be a bit intense as well. I don't think it's going to be too bad for you because of where it is, um, but it can be quite a sensual, quite kind of, quite a kind of charged and steamy kind of full moon because it is ruled by Scorpio. Um, but in your sixth house, you know, I feel like you might find. I think healing will be in um, taking care of yourself, giving yourself a little bit of TLC, especially if you've been in any way. Um, ill or depleted. I know with that sun in your 12th house you might have been feeling a little bit more physically depleted. So the sixth, house, sixth, <laughs> the sixth house full moon will just be some nice healing energy um, on a physical level for you. Um, right, also, where are we? On the 11th we have Mars in your sign and that's squaring Neptune in your 10th house. This is interesting energy because Mars is your drive and your will and Neptune is, it can be like um, the intangible, Neptune is illusion, Neptune is, um, Neptune is, can be kind of victimization, it can be bound, bound, boundlessness, is boundlessness the right word? Being boundaryless, yes I think so, boundlessness, <laughs> creativity. So this could either have you feeling quite inspired in terms of your work and what you do in the world and maybe feeling quite, um, you might be, like I said, feeling quite inspired and, and might be fantasizing about where your career could go, that kind of thing. At the same time, another way that this can work at a more kind of mundane or maybe egoic level is that it can also lead to trying to um, obtain something without being necessarily very straightforward because Mars is our will and, and Neptune is not a very clear planet. It's very misty, murky. Like I said, it rules illusions. Um, it rules Hollywood. So this could be just, if you can, try and avoid gaining anything that you might want, especially related to career. Try and avoid going about something in a roundabout way or in a sneaky kind of way um, it wouldn't do you wouldn't serve you well but this kind of energy kind of speaks to not feeling quite sure enough or trusting your own maybe ability enough or your own um, yeah your own ability enough to be able to get what you need or to be able to ask for what you need in a straightforward manner so just be aware of that um, on the 16th um, on the 16th we've got Mercury entering that, um, that, 12th house of, that, uh, <laughs> that 12th house of yours. So where your mind has been very much on networking and social groups and maybe you've been very chatty and, you know, out there on social media aren't quite a lot perhaps. Now Mercury goes into your 12th house, it goes behind the scenes and it joins the sun. And so it joins, you know, your thinking and your energy are kind of, they, they, you kind of, uh, they're a bit more drawn in. And your mind, you're probably likely to be less communicative. You might be going over the past year, looking at, reviewing how it's gone for you, which is what we naturally do as it comes up to our birthday, we kind of take stock. So it's a good time to take stock. Um, you probably won't be wanting to communicate too much. And maybe your thoughts will be on your more private life, your inner world, and that's fine. Um, 
it's you know mercury is direct so like i said that's fine for like moving forward with things but i doubt although mars is there it's strange because mars is there in your first house which is almost like wanting to push you forward you're not quite there yet but you will be soon <laughs> so that's on the um where are we that's on the 16th isn't it i'm sure it is yeah okay and then on the 19th is when we have the big news, Saturn in Sagittarius trines Uranus in your 11th house. So Saturn's there in your 7th house. And this is interesting, there have probably been themes of, of freedom and expansion and restriction in terms of your relationships, your one-on-one -on -one relationships, as well as your, your relationships with um, groups and associations. And um, if you have any planets, by the way, in um, any of the fire signs, this will affect them and this will be felt um, very much so. But it's going to affect us all regardless, but especially if you have planets in any of the fire signs, Aries, Leo or Sagittarius. So for you, I'm looking at this and, and I'm seeing, because this is about, you know, Saturn meeting Uranus, it's like the old way of doing things, structure um, and conformity and stability meets the eccentric, um, unexpected, um, changeable energy of Uranus, but this is in a really positive way. So if there has been some sort of shift you've wanted to make in terms of your goals, maybe it's been related to your partner, maybe you've been, maybe you've been together a little while and, you know, you start to see that actually where you want to go in life maybe hasn't, doesn't quite match up with where they want to go in life and maybe that's been a bone of contention well now there could be some breakthroughs with that and you might be able to bring your two paths together um this is about sorry i had my lunch not that long ago <laughs> this is about transition and positive change and you know uranus at the end of the day it rules it rules um Aquarius, which was the 11th house. So with Uranus being in your 11th house, you know, there's chance for change in terms of what groups you belong to um, and maybe even your place in society. That might change, that could change as a result of your partner and what's going on with them. So there's very supportive activity here. If there's been any kind of chaos or uncertainty within your partnership or within the groups that you belong to, that kind of thing, then you, there's an opportunity for you to bring order out of that chaos. For those of you who are self-employed or who own your own business, this is really great energy as well. Um, this is the ability to be able to look at all the details and really um, you know, break things down into workable kind of units and and to see clearly so this is really really positive energy this is very good energy i'm, I'm sure there's another there's another um aspect here which also favors this if i i lost it now um i don't know if i mentioned it oh yes on the 11th um mercury trining saturn mercury trining saturn which is also about you know having a strong business mind that's your ruling planet obviously so you might be finding, especially if you're self-employed or you run a business, that um, all the pieces start to come together, you start to see clearly who, who you need to be networking um, with, who it is you need to be marketing to, that kind of thing. And if you have a business partner, you know, they will be helping you, you'll be working together really well. So there's transformation here for you in terms of your one-on-one -on -one relationships and your and your goals and the groups you belong to, causes you belong to and your dreams. Um, so this is really lovely energy, this is positive change. On the, on the 20th is when the sun enters your sign, so happy birthday Gemini. So you're going to be feeling, you, you've come out of that 12th house, you've now started to come to life again and you're going to be feeling like you again, you know, the Mars is there as well, so you should be feeling quite energetic, quite exuberant. Yes, Mercury, your ruling planet, is still in the 12th house, um, so there might still be some stuff going on behind the scenes, but it's going to put a spotlight more on you, you know, and and you might be thinking more about your appearance, how you come across, and, and feeling a little bit more sociable than you have been recently. Um, on the 25th, 
we have a new moon in your sign as well. So this speaks to, like I was saying, you coming out of that 12th house kind of energy. So the new moon in your sign is feeling refreshed. This is an opportunity to for a new emotional beginning. And how, how nice is that, you know, to have the sun enter your sign and then to also have a new moon in your sign. It's like a real reset button. And if you want to try anything new, if you want to maybe try something new with your appearance, then this could be a good time to do that. Um, there's nothing to suggest that it shouldn't be received well. Everything else looks good. Um, but yeah, if you want to try something new with your, experience, with your appearance, <laughs> um, then this could be a really positive time for that. Um, on the 29th, we have Mars in your sign, opposing Saturn. Um, so Saturn being in Sagittarius in your seventh house, this says to me some sort of a conflict perhaps between you and a partner in terms of will. Um, it could be that you feel like um, like it could be it could be a partner. It could just be it could be a business partner. It could just be someone who you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with, but you might feel that there could be a feeling that your will is being thwarted. You're not able to assert yourself as you want in some sort of a relationship. So just watch out for any kind of um, battle there and try and see if there's, if you can remain moderate, if there's some sort of middle ground to be found that works for both of you and balances things up with both of you. But there could be something that comes up there on the 29th. Um, on the twin, on the 31st, we've got um, two aspects. We've got Mars in your sign, sextiling Uranus in your 11th house. So it could be that you have a little bit of a, maybe you have a bit of an upset with your partner, something like that. And then you decide to spend some time with friends and and just, I don't know, do something different. You're, you might be feeling quite restless on this day. It might be good just to blow off some steam. If the 29th was a bit of a tough day, maybe blow off some steam with your friends. Have fun. Try something new. And you could really enjoy that. Um, also on this day, we've got um, your ruling planet, which is trining Pluto in your eighth house. And, you know, this is to me saying... Again, this could be like, you could get insights. You could get interesting insights into other people's motivations, interesting insights into yourself. You might be reading the subtext of what's going on in social situations quite clearly because um, Pluto is a natural ruler of the eighth house. And, you know, often Pluto can, can see through things, can see through the the bullshit if you like and with Pluto we kind of have a sixth sense we can get to the bare bones of the truth and so with that trining Mercury in your 12th house it's it's kind of like you could have x-ray vision so that could serve you well in terms of you know understanding other people's motivations but all in all I think it's going to be a great month for a lot of us I feel like we're really you know we're we're getting positive soul evolution now and it's 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 good you know this is the good karma stuff i feel like a lot of us have done the work we've done, been through some hard times and, and now it's starting to pay off so you know this was more fun and self-expression with that north node and leo and breakthroughs as well within partnerships and within groups and in, in relation to your dreams and your, and your goals so i hope you have a wonderful may gemini and happy birthday to those of you may born gemini's and i will see you next month if you want to catch up um, with me in the meantime i'll be doing a new moon um video as well as a full moon reading as well so take care i'll see you soon Bye bye